It's Roger, Mud Fossil University, today talking about the double slit versus single slit experiment. Totally misunderstood. And I can't understand how they could possibly let this go by. The fundamentals of physics are totally wrong and totally they don't care. They just don't care. All right, this is a fellow named Ken Wheeler. I'm, the reason I'm showing you this is that other people are doing the same work that I've been doing and Rodney Warren has been doing and tons of other people. And the people in the mainstream ignore it because it goes against what they say. And, and they cannot ignore this and, become credi and stay credible. They're just not credible anymore at all. Now, he, this is what Ken Wheeler has to show here. Now, I don't, I don't agree with his conclusion that light is not a particle. Light is a particle. And the only thing that can create perturbation, which he says is, is, is light is, is a perturbation, I agree with that. But the perturbator is a particle. Now, um, what he's seeing and showing here is a single slit experiment, and that is what comes out of the slit. It's not just a blurry line of nothing, and it has nothing to do with a wave. It has to do with a particle spinning as it goes through that slit. And it cuts through that slit, cuts this way and that way and this way and that way and this way and that way. And that's what creates these patterns around this. Of course, the made majority is going through the center. I show this very carefully and uh, very detailed in our... Um, acceleration experiment. There's no question whatsoever what it is. In my mind, if anybody can come up with a different conclusion, I want to hear it. Nobody can, and nobody has. Okay, Ken Wheeler gives a pretty good uh, demonstration of how he's doing. It's a single, and we did the same exact same thing he's doing, only we used a Venturi. He's using a, 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 a slit that is a, a flat slit. We used a Venturi slit. Now, and ours accelerated. Now, what he's showing here is an excel is the um, laser light, and he's going to show pointer, this not across. Not a laser pointer, but actually a precision one. You don't make them like that anymore. I'm passing it through the gap, of a very thin gap of uh, less than a, about a half a millimeter gap of uh, two razor blades. All right, so he's got two razor blades side by side, and he's shooting the light between them. The same thing the other guy is going to be doing. Now, and, and then he got that pattern that I showed you. Now, let's look at the, what the other guy's doing. Same thing. Now, this is from a, a channel called Tube Physics, and it's diffraction at a single slit experiment. Now, he took a plastic cover, and he laid in two um, razor blades, and he created a little slit. Now, why they have to have these very thin razor blade slits, which the light can just spin right through and not do what it does in ours. We have an acceleration, and I'll show you ours in a second, but here's what he's showing. You cut a small slit, a small aperture. All right, so he's got the small slit, and up here he shows the, the pattern that he's getting out of it. All right, so he's he, he's going to set it up. The lights. Turns off the lights. Okay. And that's what he's getting. Now you can see here. No. Obviously, what's happening is the light's approaching, and there's a zillion of them of these things coming at it. As it comes through, most of them stay in the center, but some go swish off to that direction, see it? And some swish off to this direction. Now, it accounts for it exactly, perfectly, in the double slit experiment as well. It's not anything to do with a flapping particle wave duality, anything like that. It's a particle that spins forward. All right, now, this is the single slit. It comes through here, and most of it goes through the center, but some goes to the sides. We saw that. Now, the double slit, you have a slit here and a slit here. So some comes through this slit, goes out to that side, and then some goes into the center. Well, when it goes into the center, this has the same thing. Some going into the center, some going to the outside. The two going into the center bash together, and they end up being the bright slit, and then you have two pretty bright slits, and then you have a little less, and then less, 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 less. That is the whole process. Now let me show you our light experiment. Now I'm looking from straight above, the experiment and we accelerated that light there's the particle beam right there all of this is concussion there's the particle beam and because this is not that tiny little slit that they have we have a, an accelerator slit that forces these tiny particles and you can see them they are particles they're not waves and so forth they crush into each other's 
occupational regions. They have a tiny spot in the center and they control a pretty good sized region around them. When they crush into other people's regions, that's what makes them glow. They're compressive, luminescent corpuscles. That's what they are. When they compress, they luminesce. I cannot explain that, but I know it happens and I can see it happen. And you can see it happen here with all of these little particles that are also being concussed because of this enormous wave of radiation which is coming backwards called reverse EMF, reverse electromotive force. And that is what is causing those particles to concuss. Now, when they come out of the accelerator, they're all negative particles, so they try to ex get away from others as fast as they can. When they do, the main beam is, comes through the center, and it's being forced this way and that way, so it stays there. The rest are also being forced both the directions until they spread out, until they can't spread any further. That is the nature of the interference patterns. There's no waves I mean, the only wave there is, if you look at this from the side, yeah, it's a wave. But if you look at it head on, it's a particle. It's coming through space like this, spinning like this. If you look at it here, yeah, it's a wave. That's a fast cycle wave, a real low frequency. This is a high, you know, when I say low frequency, I mean in the higher, more frequencies per cycle. You know, in, in, in a second, you might have a million cycles. And the other ones like here, you might have a thousand cycles in a second. But you look at it from the side, it's a wave. You look at it from the front, though, it's spinning this way, it's a particle. And that's what causes it. Some go this way, some go that way. It's simple as that. All right, that's just the start of things. I mean, there's so much wrong with physics and energy and the atom and the atomic model. It's, uh, it's unbelievable. Um, but this, is before you can even go one step for, further in physics, you have to explain this. How is this light accelerating? If that's not acceleration, what is it? Why is that accelerating? Why are these particles? Why are these things, little particles, glowing all over the place here in these magnetic radiation waves? What concusses them? What causes them to glow? Why are they in the air in the first place? That's the ether. And guess what, my friend? The ether that comes from the sun is nothing more than light. Everybody's going to agree with that. Oh, light comes from the sun, yes. This is red laser light from a red laser. It's light. They both have a mass. They both have a particle. They both are little particles. Light is dark matter on its way to Earth. It has nothing to concuss with. They're, they're all negative little particles coming off the sun. And everything there is is coated with negative particles. Every single thing there is. That's what's being thrown off the sun. Those you know, I mean, there's some heavy particles too, some what they call nucleons, which are, are, are also the central core of these atoms. Those are coming out too, yes. Certainly not in the, the quantities these are, because these are coming out in the very, you know, long frequency waves. These are coming on radio waves, you know, from the sun. These aren't all like super gamma wacko rays. Most of them are the very gentle radio waves. They're long frequency waves. We'll come up to Mud Fossil University. We need to address these issues. I have DNA shows that there's giants in the earth. No, they don't bother looking at that. I have these experiments which show what light really is. They can't, they can't match these experiments. They cannot match the experiments that I show. And they will not comment on them because they are stuck against a wall of denial and, and, and just hiding behind ignorance that they can't. They, when, when you ignore something, you are ignorant. I'm sorry, that's just a fact. No single person will respond. And I'm sending them to all the people that are touting, no, we did this, we did this, we figured this out. I send every one of them. Not one single response. And I send them all my work, and I show them this, I show them that. Some of them I see they're doing almost exactly the same things I've done. Now, recently, after years of me sending them stuff. But that's just, you know, this is nonsense that they can't, can't respond to somebody that has credible evidence. 
Like, how can they come out and make all these statements without, you know, investigating the things that prove that they're wrong? And they prove they're wrong. Not just maybe this, maybe that, or I have an idea. No, I have evidence. I don't bring anything forward. Nothing, zero will I bring forward that is not supported by 99% of the times physical evidence, absolutely physical evidence that cannot be disputed in my opinion. I would love to see it disputed. And the rest of the time I have texts and so forth that speak of things that relate to the things that I am presenting. And normally they're, they relate identically to the things that I'm presenting about the floods and about Venus and about the catastrophes and about everything that I presented. The, the dragon, the fish, the giants, all are in history. So Turn your mind around and start thinking for a change, my friends out there in academia land. Respond to me. Respond to me, or you've lost your credibility. All right? You've lost your credibility as far as I'm concerned. You don't respond. I'm sorry, you're just not, totally not credible. I'm not just sending out guesses. All right, it's, it's, it's annoying as hell. In six years of just a total ignoring, just, oh, we're, 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 we can just go and lie to all the kids, tell them stuff we, we know isn't true, we don't really care. That's what's going on. I'm going to tell you that right now. They don't care because I've informed them. It's not like they don't know this. It's not like this is a hidden. All right, and I put on more videos than Louis Mayer. <laughs> I'm telling you, and, and, and it, it doesn't matter. There's no evidence they will even examine. 